Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Kevin O'Leary and I'm the product manager for Battlefield Bad Company 2. Awesome. And, and I just got <laughs> shot down. <laughs> cool, so for anyone that hasn't been following the, the project, give us a bit of a, a top line overview of it. Um, sure, so I mean Battlefield Bad Company 2 uh, came out earlier in March. Off to great success. We've sold over 5 million units worldwide, and so we're obviously very pleased with that. And um, you know, had great success. We've been releasing pieces of content for players called VIP map packs, and uh, now we're kind of ready to come out with our, our big digital expansion pack, and that's Battlefield Bad Coming to Vietnam. Cool, so what's changed? Um, so, you know, you can see obviously in the environment here, we are no longer in a modern day setting. I'm using an old school weapon, an old AK 47. Playing with some teammates here who don't look like you know they're in the modern day army, um, but you know it's still Battlefield by coming to at the roots. And so at the end of the day, you're uh, you're still getting that same great online experience that you're used to in the past. Um, it's just a lot of new settings, weapons, vehicles, all that stuff has changed and been uh, kind of backdated, if you will, not updated, to um, Vietnam era. So as you can see here, I'm using an old AK-47. We have. Some of our partner guys around us here, there's quite a few, um, wow, there's quite a few bad guys around. Oh, finally get down. Um, one of the cool things we've done, as you saw kind of the opening intro, is we have a bunch of older vehicles. We have six of them to be exact. And one of them there, we'll go get it this time again, is my favorite, the Huey helicopter. Yep. And of course, Battlefield's always known for, you know, the fantastic online gameplay, but vehicles always make a big part of that. As you saw, there's plenty of destruction still involved. So. All those core tenants are still there. There's just a lot of new elements specifically for the uh, the Vietnam era. So you can see here I am in the, the Huey. We're gonna go. Uh, maybe we're gonna go take the take the fight to the, the Viet Cong right here. I think I'm playing as. Oh, here we go. We got some. Uh, Somebody anti doesn't want you to. Win yeah, that. someone doesn't want me to. So we're gonna we're gonna go in, come in hot in a second here. We also have a whole bunch of. Nice, there we go. Let my teammates take it out the rest of the way. Woo! Um, we, going yeah. from a, a modern setting to, uh, to Vietnam, where you are limited by uh, the, the kind of era specific stuff that you can put into the, the game, is that a, a challenge or an opportunity? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. You know, you look at it in the terms of the fact is we wanted to make an expansion pack yep. out of this game, and we didn't want it to be just uh, just you know new content and yep. and for the sake of content. So. It's, it's a really cool experience. When you get in there, you know, you look at the numbers and stuff, and you're like, okay, there's new weapons, there's new maps, there's all that new stuff. But at the end of the day, I can still come in here and try and do, you know, <laughs> come in there and try and dump a, a vehicle right on them. Kill this guy down for us, there we go. So at the end of the day, like, it's a brand new experience, but still feels like Battlefield. And one of the cool things that we have in the game, you know, you have small things, like we talked about the weapons, the new vehicles, there's four new maps which give you a lot of new area to you know go in and play around in. But together, it feels like a brand new experience. So you have these great things like, oh, the destruction of the vehicles, but you're getting in there using different weapons, and it just it really just feels differently. And you get stuff, one of the big things I've taken away is the, the dense foliage. You can come in and you snipe, and it's very different. You can sit in a big pile of bushes and shoot guys, and no one can really see you. Then you move to a different pile and you shoot them again, and, you know, in the modern setting and with the weapons that we have uh, in regular, in, you know, the regular version of Bad Coming 2, it's not quite the same. So it just opens up slightly new gameplay elements. Uh, you know, one of the cool things that we have with Battlefield.com, we have a blog, and we post every time we do a major change or update. We post a lot of those changes, what they are. You know, slightly tweaking or balancing weapons uh, is is a really big thing. Making sure that you know if something seems like it's slightly over or underpowered, you can adjust it, you can tweak them, tune them. And so I think that's one of the big things. You know, if you look even back before the game came out, the betas that we ran, giving people the option to give us feedback on a non-final game, and then see those changes in action when they finally load the disc in a tray, I think it's not only rewarding for those players, but it's also very beneficial for everyone in the whole experience. We come out with a game that's already had testing on it in, in ways like that. So the Battlefield team always has been highly respectful and receptive to the community. So. You know, even more so coming in with this with this title in this game, I think a lot of people are excited about it, and in a lot of ways, it's a good nod back to you know a, a older game that we may have made a, you know a handful of years before. Yeah. So what are you showing here that's new? 
Um, so, I mean, everything, like we talked about, the setting itself is new. You know, we, we have the same modes yeah. that we've had in Bad Coming 2, but this, this map itself is called Fubai Valley. Yeah. And so, as you can see, so we're talking about, like, the dense foliage and stuff like that. We have four total maps, and they are there is good variety within those maps themselves as well. So, this is just one of, one of the many to show. And uh, you'll recognize it's kind of traditional conquest mode. Oh. So now I'm gonna switch to the gunner and see if I can. All right. You can see like the vehicles are still like very centered in the game, trying to take out this Huey helicopter from afar. And now I just ran overheated my gun. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you can see like those are the great what we call battlefield moments. Those great classic like archaic elements that you can't really script or or you know try and reenact that. It's gonna be really hard, but they're amazing and they're fun. I mean that's you know that's a great piece to have on on screen and recorded. So. In terms of uh, tech. Uh, yeah. Obviously, wanting to support the game really heavily post-launch. Yep. What kind of process was put in place during development to allow the continual update of the, the title post-launch? I mean, I think you know the first thing you're going to look at is what we did with um, with the VIP map packs, and you know we gave we rewarded a lot of our our loyal customers, the guys that keep coming back, the ones that we know are going to be interested in the game, and we we let them know that like, hey, all right, we're going to be giving you guys. You know, revised maps, like different modes that you played. You know, for example, like Nelson Bay was a really cool map that people liked. And we opened it up to a different mode that you can now try it in a different scenario. And obviously, you know, the difference between Conquest or um, Squad Deathmatch or Rush, there's, you know, we make different modes for a reason. And so, give people good reason to come back and try new stuff. It's coming out on all three platforms that we support. So, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. And you'll be looking out for it uh, later this winter.